Hi everybody, everybody I'm back. Everybody, Jeannie Young is back and I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. I am so excited, yet another day, because today at the Young's house, Jeannie Young is gonna share with you all how I make an amazing apple upside down cake. Have you ever had it? Have you ever heard of it? Have you ever tasted it? Let me know in the comment section below. This recipe is so fun. It does not require a lot of ingredients and you know, if you make a Jeannie Young style, it's gonna be so tasty. Here are the lovely ingredients you will need. You all never had my apple upside down cake. You better make yourself. Here's what you will need. You will need apples. And I highly suggest when you pick out your apples, Granny Smith is the way to go because these apples will be able to stand the heat. They're not gonna get mushy on you. They'll still remain somewhat crispy. Okay, so you will need butter and oil you're gonna need some eggs and also brown sugar. Now it's up to your discretion whether you wanna use dark brown sugar or light brown sugar. I decide to use the light brown sugar because it doesn't make the top of the cake really dark. Some people like for theirs to be a little bit darker and if you're that person, use dark brown sugar. You will need vanilla and maraschino cherries. I have drained the juice off of the maraschino cherries and we're gonna use box cake mix and we're using a vanilla flavor. Now, it all depends on what kind of cake mix you decide to use. That will depend on what ingredients you're gonna use, okay? So now, let's make sure your hands are impeccably clean. Let's get started with this really quick and simple, yet so tasty recipe. So, the first thing that I wanna do, we want to start chopping up our apples. Okay, and I'm gonna show you how I want to chop my apples. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. If you have an apple core, absolutely, you're gonna go in and take that core out, okay? And you can peel the out outside of the apple if you like. I'm not gonna peel the outside. Let me show you what I'm gonna do. Okay, and make sure you wash off your veggies when you bring them home. You wanna wash off the pesticides and you never know who's handled your veggies before you brought them home. So now we're just gonna go on, we're gonna cut that end off, just like so. And we're gonna chop up, or we're gonna slice slices. And what I like to do is I think about how thick is a pineapple when I make pineapple upside down cake. Around about that thick, right? So that's what we're gonna do. And then I'm gonna show you an easy way to cut the core out. Okay, feel free to peel off the skin if you like. I'm gonna leave the skin right on there and it really doesn't make a difference. Now, in the past, I have made another video for you for an upside down apple cake, but it's not this one here. That upside down apple cake that I made for you all was a caramel upside down apple cake. Feel free to check out that recipe. It was so much fun. All right, so we're gonna continue to slice our apples just like this, trying our best to keep them all the same size, all right? Make sure you, you know, keep your digits in, okay? Just like this, beautiful. Just like so. And that one's a little too small for me, but those apples will not get wasted. We'll definitely eat those apples. You know, honestly, when you think about it, an upside down cake can be made out of just about any fruit that you think of. You can do a peach upside down cake. You know, I did the, I believe I did the orange apple, uh, orange upside down cake. It was amazing. Possibilities are endless when you think of an upside down cake. I want to show you all something funny and I don't want you to judge me. Okay, look at this right here. <laughs> Come in close. <laughs> this right here is earlier when I went to peel off the sticker. <laughs> look, I went to peel off the sticker for each apple <laughs> and I dug in. I could like the stickers were stuck on with super glue. <laughs> 
So each apple has a little indent and I'm okay with that as long as I did it, right? <laughs> I didn't purchase the apples like that. Come on guys. <laughs> I need to tell you that before the comments. The comments are going to come in like 40 going north. <laughs> I'm so serious. <laughs> I cracked myself up. I know, I know. Gina, you are so mouse. All right, I'm gonna continue to cut these. Now, you can put your apples in a bowl of cold water, and you can also squeeze a little bit of lemon or lime juice in with your apples so that they don't turn color, okay? Because naturally, your apples are gonna uh, oxidize. What oxidize means is when they start to hit, the air starts to hit them, they're gonna naturally turn colors. It's honestly okay because they're gonna turn colors in the oven. So if you wanna use a little bit of lemon juice, that's fine. But if you don't want to, that's fine as well. Just make sure that we take your apples and at least put them in some nice cold water. All right, so I'm gonna continue. I'm just about done with my apple slices here. And then I'll share with you all how we're gonna put the hole in the middle. Because when I think upside down cake, you have to have that beautiful maraschino cherry right in the middle. You know, just as if it was a pineapple upside down cake. You need that cherry in the middle. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right, we're gonna go in and cut just maybe one more slice here. And I'll be right back. And when I come back, I'm going to share with you all how to put that hole there. Okay, everyone. So we have all of the apples in some cold water. And I didn't put any lemon or lime in it. Okay, it's just nice ice cold water. Now watch this. I'm going to share with you all how to make the hole. There's one ingredient I almost forgot, which is cinnamon. It's an option, okay? But I need cinnamon. When I think apples, you have to have cinnamon. All right, now watch this. I'm gonna take just this paring knife or any sharp knife that you have, and we're just gonna go in in a circle. Okay, try your best. Okay, you can do it. <laughs> hey, if I can do it, you can do it. I'm no artist here. <laughs> All right, and then we're just gonna punch the little hole out, just like so in this manner, and your cherry is gonna be able to fit smack dab in the middle. Try your best to make your hole, you know, as centered as possible. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. And then I'll show you how to do another. And then the others will be done off camera. Pretty simple, right? That's because it is. And everything that Gina Young does, you better believe you can do as well. Yours is going to turn out exactly like mine's would. Trust me when I tell you this. So now we're going to go right in and we're going to cut that core out as well. Same thing. Just, you know, moving kind of slow will help you to do a better job. And honestly, if your knife cuts through that way, it's okay. Just continue with your circle. Don't freak out. Okay, no worries in the kitchen. All right, I'm going to make that hole just a little bit bigger. All right, I want to make it just a little bit more centered, so we're going to cut a little bit over here. You all might hear that train in the background. It's so funny because during this video, I've at least heard three trains go by, <laughs> and we've paused the video every time. We're not going to pause for this train. <laughs> not going to do it. Not right now. All right, see this here? Perfect. I'm going to do the others off camera, and I'll be right back. Okay, everyone, so now what we want to do, let's go ahead and get our eggs cracked. You want to crack them always into a separate bowl just to assure that you don't get any egg yolks because if you crack it in your mix, there's a chance that you're going to have to toss out your mix. Crack it in a separate bowl. That way, if you get any eggshells, you can fish them out, okay? All right, just like so. All right, we are going to open up our cake mix. And this would be really good with the spiced cake mix. Oh, it would be delicious. All right, so we're gonna put this in to our stand-up mixer. 
And you don't have to have a stand-up mixer to do this recipe. You can use a handheld mixer that has the two beaters, or you can mix this up by hand, and it's going to turn out successful as well. So now we want to use the half a cup of oil. This is just vegetable oil. Pretty simple, right? That's because everything that Gina Young does is simple and tasty as well. We're going in with some vanilla. Vanilla is going to give an amazing flavor as well. It's going to give you an amazing aroma. We want to put our three eggs in. And then I'm going to get behind me and get one cup of cold water. Be right back. Okay, everyone, I have my one cup of cold water. Let's get it in there and let's mix up our batter. All right, we're going to start on a low speed. Get down in the mixer so you all can see. Let me know in the comment section if you can see everything. We're going to start off low because if you turn this up on high, we're going to have a big poof of powder going in our face, and we don't want that tonight. <laughs> all right, now we're going to push the speed up a little bit, and we're going to actually grab our soft spatula several times and what you want to do is you want to scrape down those sides and scrape underneath the bottom so that you can be assured that your cake mix is well incorporated. Now it's time to grab our pan here. Our pan is a 12 by 9. Okay, that's the pan that we're going to use. We want to take this half a cup of butter and we're going to melt it in the microwave probably take just 25 seconds to get it nice and melty and then we're going to start to assemble the top side of our cake be right back hey everyone while our butter melts in the microwave let's take this time to scrape down the sides of our bowl everything looks amazing looks like everything is nice and well incorporated we're just going to mix it for around about two more minutes and this part is done you can hear the microwave going off our butter's nice hot and melty and that's what we're wanting so now we want to measure out one cup of brown sugar and you want to pack the sugar into your uh, measuring cup i like to do this over the sink that way I don't pour sugar all over the place. Be right back. Okay, everyone, so now that our butter is nice and melty, go ahead and pour your stick of butter right into the pan, just like so. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, it's okay that you use margarine as well. Now we're gonna take one cup that has been packed tightly into your measuring cup. We're gonna mix it right in with the butter just like so you know when i was growing up i used to see people uh, make this over the stove and so when i first started making upside down cakes i would like cook the butter and the brown sugar over the stove because that's what i grew up watching but i've learned you know as i had more experience cooking just do it this way it turns out the same way you know, you don't have to dirty up a pot or a pan doing this. All right. This right here is perfect. I'm happy with this. Oh, baby, listen here. Okay, now that everything is well incorporated, that sugar is mixed into that butter. Now we can go in with our apples. I have poured the the water off of the apples we're going to go in and grab our apples just like so and we're going to place them in a line my mouth is watering <laughs> onto our pan just as if this was you know pineapples as if you were making pineapple upside down cake absolutely all right i'm looking for a certain size that's why you kind of see me searching for the ones that I want <laughs> perfect this is so much fun I want you all to make this and then come back and tell Gina Young what you thought about the recipe you have to you have to let me know what you thought okay now here's the thing if I can't fit it 
You can make it work, Gina. Work it out. You know how to work it out. We're going to do just that. You better believe we are. <laughs> Baby! Oh! There we go. Let's work it out, Gina. You know it. Alright, and we're going to make this one go just like so. Perfect. And so now, what are we going to do next? We're going to take our cherries. I have to eat one mm, because I love them. Sometimes your maraschino cherries will come with the stem and sometimes they'll come without the stem. We're going to take our cherry, put it right down in that hole, and you want to take the part where the stem has came out and put that part upwards. You don't have to, but it really is just how I prefer. Perfect. We have Prince and Polo are here in the kitchen with us. They're kind of watching. I know they're waiting on the smells. They're just staring at me right now. <laughs> you all ask about them on a daily basis. I try my best to show them in the videos. They act like they love being on camera, actually. Okay, everyone, so I'm going to continue to put the cherries in, just like so. We had a little hiccup here, but we made up for it, right? Absolutely. Don't let anything hold you back. <laughs> I hope you all are having an amazing day today, as well as a great work week. All right, so then... Our cake mix. Let's take this off. We want to take our beautiful cake mix and then we want to pour it right over this cake. Right, or I'm sorry, right over our brown sugar, our butter, our apples, and our maraschino cherries. Now we're going to go in with the cinnamon. Get you some cinnamon on your apples. I feel like you need that cinnamon on your apples. Don't be afraid. Ooh, girl, you are something else in that kitchen. You hear me? Guys, and seriously, like I said earlier, feel free to check out my video for how to make the caramel apple upside down cake. It was so much fun. And this one here, it's fun as well. And just as delicious. Be careful when you're pouring your cake mix because you really don't want to disturb your fruit underneath. You don't want it to go swishing and, you know, swishing all over the place and moving out of place. Okay, so now that we have our cake mix in, we plan on cooking this for around about 35 minutes. But I will actually let you know the exact time that this took to cook. We're going to use, you can use a piece of spaghetti. Yes, you can. A piece of hard spaghetti to check for doneness when you're making a cake. You just use it just as if it was a toothpick. Okay? All right, just like so. We want to get all this goodness kind of nice and even. And then we're going to hit it on the counter. We're going to hit it on the counter because my grandma always told me, Gina, Hit that cake on the counter a few times. Knock those air bubbles out. So we're going to do just that. This right here is a little bit of cinnamon coming through. And guess what? It's okay. Don't freak out. This is going in the oven. 350. And when it's done, I'm going to give you all that first bite. Let's get this in the oven. Be right back. Okay, everyone. Our cake is done. It's cooked for 35 minutes on 350 degrees middle rack. You see, I kind of went stir crazy with my fork here, but guess what? I wanted to make sure that this bad boy was done. Okay, so now here's what we want to do. I want to take this knife. I've already started, but I just want to go in and kind of make sure that my cake is not sticking to the sides. You don't want your cake to be sticking to the sides and we're trying to flip this bad boy upside down. But you do want to let your cake set for around about 8 to 10 minutes. You don't want it to come right out of the oven and you flip it over, okay? Because the cake is way too hot to do that. So give it at least 10 minutes. 
And we're going to do just that. We're going to continue to go along the sides to loosen the cake up. I have my cake setting on a cooling rack. And the cooling rack will help your cake not to steam. If you put this cake on the counter or on a platter, it'll start to steam. Okay, putting it on the cooling rack allows air to circulate and allows your cake to cool down a little bit faster. You cannot have an amazing dessert without a nice cup of milk. Right here, we have some 2% milk and I have ice in it. And then we have some amazing vanilla bean ice cream that we're going to have right alongside of this cake. And if you all enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time Gina Young uploads one of these awesome recipes. Tell your family and friends and everybody you know, hey, tell the whole world about Gina Young and what I'm doing in this kitchen on a daily basis, absolutely. Let's go right into our prayer and then we're gonna flip this over. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for today and for every day. Lord, we thank you for your love, time, your mercy, and your understanding. Please forgive us for our sins. Come into our hearts. We make you our Lord and Savior. Send your angels down to surround us day and night and your Holy Spirit to help us make good decisions. Give us peace over our mind in the name of Jesus. Devil, you have no authority over this household in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the roof over our head, the food, the love, the peace and the joy that you bring us every day, Lord. We thank you for that. Amen. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, that this cake is going to turn over with no problems. I tell you what, I have made so many upside down cakes, but you always get that kind of scary, nervous feeling. <laughs> you really do, at least I do. When I go to flip a cake, come on, Gina, relax. Know that with God, all things is possible. And really, that's true. That is definitely true. Okay, so now we're just going to take a clean cookie sheet and we're going to give it a nice turn. Pretty simple, right? I did that really quickly. And then what I like to do, I like to go in with a cold, a cold towel or a cold rag, just like so in this manner, just to kind of assist my cake. <laughs> Here in a second, I'll be right back. Hey everyone, I'm back. Look, just look, just look, just look, just look. No, 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 at the bags under my eyes, not the cake. <laughs> it's 10, what time? It's 10.08 p.m. Gina Young has gave you all three recipes today and I enjoyed every bit of it. And I hope you all enjoyed these recipes as well. Now you can take a look at the cake. <laughs> The cake is so beautiful. You hear me? It screams beauty. I would love to have this any day. Any day of the week, birthday, holiday. This is what you want. Okay, now look at this. I'm going to give you all that first bite. We have that nice vanilla bean ice cream. Let's go in for a piece of this cake. Hey everyone, sorry about the dogs barking, but I think they want a piece of this cake too. I want to give you all that first bite. Look at this. Look how beautiful and crispy it is right there. That's all apple juice. Oh, caramelized with that brown sugar and that butter. Oh, listen here. <laughs> Baby, you better make you some. Oh, and the apple is nice and soft. All right, I'm going to give you guys that perfect piece. Oh. Mm-hmm, uh-huh. Come on, Apple, work with me. Look at this, guys. I want you all to taste this, taste that apple. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Go on, taste it. I'm going in, guys. Mm, mm-hmm, mm. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> I don't know which one's best. Pineapple upside down, apple upside down. They both are amazing. Look at this. Mm. Dang, that's good. Mm hmm. Mm. Mm. Hoo wee. 
a little bit of ice cream on this one. And as always, God bless each and every one of you. Thank you all for watching. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Good night. Dang, that's good.